Hi, welcome to LD Talks. I am Arunako. Today we are going to talk about Manchester and differential Manchester encoding schemes. So this is the talk outline. We will uh, start with the basics of bytes encoding techniques. Then we will talk about Manchester and differential Manchester encoding schemes. So uh, these are the variants, and we are going to cover this two in this lecture. So. Uh, what the uh, uh, features of the biphase encoding schemes I mean as we have seen in the last few lectures there is some uh, synchronization problem remains in the encoding scheme and then biphase encoding uh, reduce the synchronization problem we will see in uh, next couple of slides the transition state uh, always happen to be in the middle of the uh, bit period and it never returns to zero. It uh, remains either in the negative voltage side or in the positive voltage side because here we are taking uh, two polar voltages as we have talked about in the polar encoding lecture. There are two variants. Uh, one is uh, Manchester encoding and another is differential Manchester encoding. So in the Manchester encoding scheme, I mean, uh, whenever we have some input data stream, always we will represent it as a transition. For say we we represent the uh, zero as a low to high and one as high to low, uh, or the vice versa. Here we can see in this diagram that this is one which is uh, represented as a transition from positive to negative level voltage, and zero as a uh, positive to sorry here the sign will be different so it should be negative to positive voltage or so on and uh, yes and uh, uh, by using this Manchester encoding scheme we have reduced the DC component problem which uh, results the uh, synchronization issue also so as uh, here we are representing every bit as a transition, so uh, it's kind of self-synchronization symbol because uh, the, in, the, uh, in the presence of noise or any attenuation in the channel, uh, the receiver can count the number of zeros and ones from the number of transition, whether it's going from low to high or high to low and uh, regenerate the data. So in case of Manchester encoding scheme, we will see that uh, it uh, just uh, take the data input and take the clock input and take a XOR operation on that and generate the resulting waveform. It's a form of uh, binary fish shift scheme where the, where the data controls the phase of the square of carriers, uh, which is eventually the date rate. So, okay, so here is the two conventions uh, mainly followed in the Manchester uh, encoding scheme. I mean, as the first published by the G. Thomas, I mean, where you can see this one is represented as high uh, positive or high voltage to the low voltage, and in the IEEE 802.3 uh, protocol or standardization. I mean, which is uh, meant to be in the Ethernet and the token bit standards, and you can see the one is represented as the transition from the negative voltage to positive, and zero is just the opposite of it, so high to low. So, here what uh, we have uh, talked about about the data and clock, uh, we have seen in the uh, last slides, and uh, here. Here is the data. I mean, if the data is zero and the clock is zero, then we take the XOR operation and just following the true stable of the XOR operation, the resulting waveform is going to shape. So there are some conventions when we take uh, this thing. Practically, uh, this thing is followed by data 2.3. So here we take the each bit has a period which is defined and it's not varying, it's fixed. I mean, it's not like that uh, in a uh, in a single uh, data stream, the zero uh, remains for the more time and one remains for the less time or vice versa. It's not, I mean, uh, whatever the time period of a zero or one, every bit has a fixed time period. And in 
IEEE 802.3 standards, uh, we take the 0 as high to low and 1 as uh, low to high in the G. Tom Thomas convention, the reverse is, uh, is taken. So as we saw, the, every time the transition happens to be in the mid of the bit period and uh, whenever we take an initial transition, and that is just overhead. I mean, we will see in some uh, example for say, I mean, this thing, I mean, the, this, this initial uh, waveform pattern, whatever it is, it's nothing uh, significant value because we know it's never come down to zero. So it's just a design overhead. So, but it uh, don't signify any value. So before going into the applications uh, of the Manchester encoding, we would like to see some examples I mean, how to take an input data stream and just encode it uh, in the Manchester uh, encoding scheme. So here first we will discuss about our convention for say, <coughs> this will be represented as zero, this is plus positive voltage level and this is say negative voltage level and we will represent this as one, which is going from negative voltage level to positive voltage level. So here is our example. So this is the zero the starting. So we will as per our convention, we will say, oh sorry for this uh, extra uh, drag. Okay, the end as we know, uh, this is zero to from, or oh, say sorry, from the positive voltage to negative voltage level. Say so this is positive and this is negative. And uh, we would like to see from as we have seen from uh, here that uh, one is negative to positive so we can write as negative to positive and then uh, the zero again from positive to negative and we can again this is positive to negative and this one in the same prescription this yes. from here you can see that there is some uh, gap in the pattern so here is a transition where is the transition and this thing as also to high to low and simple as that it's again high to low say it's again if there is a consecutive number of zeros, we have to use this thing. So it's been negative now. So for the one, it's this low to high. And again, for the one, it's going to be low to high. So here we will connect the, the thing. So this is the um, waveform pattern. So here uh, we can uh, this way, for say this. Sorry for the bad track. Okay. This is the Manchester encoding waveform uh, of this input data stream. Well, so now if we came to the applications of the Manchester encoding scheme, I mean, it's used as an early Ethernet physical layer. It's used in IR protocols, RFID systems, and uh, near field communication systems, which is widely used nowadays. and uh, in LAN system, uh, in Ethernet and token bus uh, uh, LAN, uh, this Manchester encoding schemes are used for uh, designing this kind of communication patterns. There are some advantages of this Manchester encoding scheme uh, uh, that uh, we have reduced the DC component system, uh, DC components of the frequency uh, presence in the signal and uh, we have reduced the signal grouping as because uh, we can see uh, from the example that uh, well, whether it's zero or one there is a transition either it's high to low or low to high it's not like uh, the previous NRC schemes or unipolar uh, encoding schemes where uh, consecutive number of zeros or consecutive number of one uh, will remain in the same voltage level I mean, whatever the Whatever the bit symbol, I mean, there is a transition. 
accordingly. So the, on the receiver end, I mean, uh, a receiver can just regenerate the data from by counting the number of transitions, which is uh, either it's going from positive voltage level to negative voltage level, or the opposite of that. So because of this uh, number of increasing number of transition and uh, by representing the every bit with the transition I mean it's ease of synchronization and it's transparent I mean as uh, I have discussed that uh, it handles quite uh, in an efficient manner if there is a long uh, consecutive uh, string of zeros or long consecutive string of ones okay so there is some drawbacks of the Manchester encoding schemes as well that so uh, this is uh, because of the large number of trans transitions it occupies a larger bandwidth and uh, uh, if there is some sudden change in polarity maybe the zero can be interpreted as one on the receiver end so here's the thing so this is a, a backdrop it it's, uh, lacks any kind of error de detection mechanism if you have any any such kind of happening present in this system okay so now uh, we will talk about the differential Manchester encoding scheme uh, it's also uh, known as some different names as bypass mark code conditioned phase and etc in different, different literatures so in in this uh, differential Manchester and the data and the clock are combined to form a Oh, sorry for this uh, spelling mistake. It will be single, not singel. That's the single. That's a two-level single synchronization uh, data stream, and the presence or absence of any transition will be indicates some logical value. I mean, as in the Manchester encoding scheme, we have seen that the zero and one are represented as uh, low to high or high to low, but here we will see. That in case of differential Manchester, I mean, uh, there is a there's a matter of convention whether you take a zero as a no transition or one as a no transition, but uh, whatever it is, if you say you are using the binary system, so uh, I mean, out of the two symbols, one symbol represents some transition and another will be that's no transition. So here in case we will see in the example that we will treat that if there is a zero. I mean there is no transition that means it uh, it will come back to the voltage level from where it started and if there is an occurrence of binary one we will change the voltage level from to another level so in case of uh, differential Manchester it's not really important what is the polarity of the signal but uh, it's the entire data is encoded in terms of change of state so here the change of state is quite important as we have seen in the uh, polar NZI scheme you know that uh, unlike the NZL where the data is not really represented as a voltage level rather it's uh, the ones are represented as a transition of the state so in the data matches for encoding we will see in case of uh, uh, occurrence of 0 and 1 we will have a transition for each of the bit but the thing is uh, if there is occurrence of uh, binary zero we will come back to the same level and if there is a one we will change the state entirely and it won't get uh, back immediately within the same bit period and uh, as in uh, the in the previous section we have seen in the Manchester encoding scheme here the and any transition happen to be in the middle of the bit period and which helps in the synchronization so here we can see there is an example of uh, Manchester encoding scheme that here this our uh, input uh, data stream it started with zero so as we have said if there is a zero we will come back to the same state for say uh, it's going from positive to negative and then it's come back to the positive within the same bit period this is a one bit period for say tb or anything and if there is a net uh, next uh, uh, bit is one so there is a transition it goes from positive to negative in the entire uh, bit period 
So there is some uh, fundamental difference or characteristics difference between the representation of 0 and 1. You can see that uh, within the term, this big period, this waveform goes to the negative voltage level and again it uh, just bounces back to the uh, positive voltage level. And uh, in case of occurrence of 1, it started from the positive voltage level and just, uh, just changed into the negative voltage level and remain there for the rest of the uh, time period or say half of the time period. And uh, whenever we get an another 0, uh, then again as uh, you can see as it started from this uh, negative voltage level, it goes to the positive voltage level and again it bounces back to the negative voltage level. And for the next consecutive 0, the same pattern will be followed. The interesting thing whenever the, it's going from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, so that's uh, you have to check minutely for, for say here also you can see the 0, I mean there is some characteristics difference, there is also 0, there is also 0, but the thing is it's not about the polarity, we are not using uh, positive voltage for 0 or negative voltage for 1 or anything, but rather we are using, I mean if there is a 0, we will come back to the same state and if there is a 1, we won't come back to the same state, rather we will transform the entire system and remain for the rest of the time or half of the pitch period in the um, opposite photos level. Before going into further slides, we would like to uh, check an example of differential Manchester encoding scheme. Here is our example. So. Uh, uh, we represent this level as a positive voltage level and this one as a negative voltage level. So uh, if we started from this zero, so as we have said uh, that uh, uh, if we get a zero we will uh, get back to the same level from where we have started and if we get a one we will change the state from to the another state. So as this is zero so we came to zero this negative voltage level then again we go back to the state from where it started then this is 1 so there is from positive voltage to negative and again whenever we encounter a 0 so we will go positive and come back to negative and then again we go to 0 positive and come back to the same state and now this transition states are quite interesting. Whenever there's a 0 to 1 or uh, there's 1 to 0 or any such states, I mean now uh, if there is a 1, we will so on, pass on to this state and as there is another 1, from here if we get a 0 then we will go high, we come back to same state. And as there is a consecutive number of zeros, the pattern will be remain same. So uh, this is the example of the differential Manchester encoding scheme, and uh, you can see if there is any uh, uh, that any transition from the high to low uh, in the very beginning. So from this thing we can detect that uh, we have a zero encountered in the very beginning of the data stream. I mean it's makes the uh, it's makes a regeneration of the data stream in the receiver when is Okay, so this is the input data stream here. We can see a comparative analysis of the Manchester encoding and differential Manchester encoding. Here you can see if there is uh, say here the one is represented as positive. Uh, to the negative and say it's going from positive to negative side and remains uh, in, in zero and the, the zero is represented as from the negative to positive because in the Manchester encoding scheme we have seen either we represent the one and zero some fixed patterns but in case of difference from Manchester it's not like that we are just representing the system as a uh, as a transition among the states so okay so there are some advantages but uh, we have already uh, talked about that 
in case of every bridge there is a transition is guaranteed and in case of noisy environment detecting the transition is less erroneous rather than uh, comparing against a threshold uh, because we have seen in case of baseline wandering whenever we are taking an average and whatever the input data stream we are measuring the input data stream with respect to that average level i mean in presence of noise or attenuation i mean that the baseline uh, starting to drift and we are uh, getting the erroneous result but here no matter whether the uh, noise is present in the system or not rather we are if there is no sudden change in polarity so we can measure the transition and from the transition we uh, just uh, successfully uh, regenerate the data on the receiver end. so uh, yeah the presence of transition important on the polarity and the magnitude of the high and low uh, signal levels at the different polarity so that's it it's effectively making the average zero so uh, theoretically we can say there is a uh, zero dc bias so uh, here we have completed uh, the uh, biphase polar encoding schemes hope uh, you can understand the examples whatever uh, i have discussed so far so hope you enjoyed the lecture thank you <laughs>